in the Parkview Green shopping mall, the most luxurious in Beijing, contemporary artist Cheng Wengling is currently exhibiting his works, The Red Men. We could dig a hole in the mouth, in the workshop. It would look good. Okay, we'll see what we can do. It will enhance his look of astonishment. I created the Red Boys series 15 or 16 years ago. It's an autobiographical piece. I was born in the late 60s during the Maoist period. All over China at that time, resources were limited and life was kind of dull. My childhood was steeped in political ideology and an adult world, taken over by subjects that prevent a happy childhood. What I want to say is that children should not have to concern themselves with the problems of the day. They should be able to keep their innocence and simply live the life of a child. Look, this is what I looked like when I was little. In fact, these statues are me. I think many other Chinese children of my generation have the same experience. We had nothing, we lived with very little, and yet we managed to be happy. You know, during the Cultural Revolution in China, life was particularly hard. But I don't think that an artist should depict suffering directly. I myself, for example, have opted to represent children and human nature in general from a resolutely positive point of view, despite the often gloomy nature of everyday life. It's in bronze. It's very heavy. Zetang, you sure it won't fall over? No, no way. Okay. So you're sure the structure is secure in the buttocks? Otherwise, it might fall over and hurt people, right? Oh, don't worry. We need to change the position of that one. Ever since the founding of New China, red has been the symbol of revolution. Traditionally, it's a fetish color. For me, it's a color unlike any other. It's a characteristic of China. We all have different relationship with the color red. My personal preference is to use red in my creations. I came to understand the reason through analysis with a psychologist. Around 20 years ago, I was attacked. My things were stolen and I suffered 10 stab wounds. I think this event traumatized me and probably influences my work in an unconscious way. Hey, this one isn't fixed. Aren't they afraid it will be stolen? This piece depicts a child leaning on a table, observing an ant. As he contemplates this microscopic world, the child is fulfilled and satisfied. He is happy because he is lost in thought. We who live in large cities, in Europe or elsewhere, should take the time to take a step back. Modernization and technological progress make it increasingly difficult to let one's mind wander. In days gone by, it was a lot easier to let yourself go. 
Today, people who live closer to nature have maintained this ability to let their minds wander. Today, the works of Cheng Wengling are exported worldwide. In 1999, he won the Golden Lion Award at the Biennale of Venice. In the same shopping mall, contemporary art sits alongside luxury clothing. This is where the workshop and sales outlet of designer Nei Tiger can be found. It's the first Chinese brand to have established itself in the very closed, very Western world of high fashion. Like all Chinese designers, Nei Tiger devotes a special part of his collections to the wedding dress, which in China is not white, but red. Who made this dress? What is it? Sequins? Yes. They're not good quality. They'll get damaged too easily. And this part isn't well made. Cover the embroidery. Don't worry, just tell them to rework the dress and make it lighter. I'd like to try it out. Don't be afraid of having a few fittings. This is really too much. Clients come to us, we talk to them about their plans. We start to make sketches. Then, depending on their name and Chinese astrological sign, we develop a completely personalized gown. This is the sewing workshop. Once the pattern is ready, we begin to prepare the finished product. All the patterns are produced in the workshop. Here, all the sewing and embroidery is done by hand. That's how we make our dresses. Chinese wedding dresses have a long history, having been around for 3,500 years. While the Western wedding dress is barely 200 years old, we have more experience in this area. I adore designing wedding outfits inspired by Chinese tradition. They're loaded with history, culture, and artistic elements. It allows me to employ a range of techniques, such as silk needlepoint, brocade, embroidery, or the use of crystals and sequins. Here, for example, is a traditional Chinese wedding dress. And here is a suit for a man, which can be worn with pants. And this is a more classical type of wedding dress. Generally speaking, for weddings or Chinese New Year celebrations, for example, everyone wears red. The color red is always accompanied by embroidery or more sophisticated gold-colored decorations. This traditional dress is called kunggua. You can see dragons and phoenixes, along with many other classical patterns. 
There's gold, silver. The pattern with bats is frequently used. In China, the bat is a symbol of happiness because its pronunciation is similar to the word happiness. See all those bats? They represent happiness here and here. It brings luck. It's a traditional symbol. I love my job, and I particularly enjoy designing wedding outfits. Marriage is the beginning of everything, between two people who have decided to seal a union. Their love then produces a family, and thus a new generation. That's why I regard my line of work as the most beautiful job in the world. I'm so happy to be able to work in this field and play my part.